Hello everyone, my name is Gene Netch and today I'm going to help you study and prepare for your pre-calc final free response. Alright, let's just jump right in. If you have the test, you know. Alright, number one. So let's, um, we have this graph, f of x, well, not the graph, we have this function. And we have to find all this stuff with it. So to attack these kinds of problems, we're going to have to look downstairs for zeros and things that cancel out with the top for example let's just factor the top the top what multiplies to 8 and adds up to negative 6 so I'm looking at x minus 4 and uh, x minus 2 and then I'm gonna quickly shortcut or not shortcut but I did the AC method and if you're interested you can email me I'm more than happy to explain but this is the clue, 9x minus 6x. Okay, so then we finally get 3x minus 6 versus x plus 3. Okay, so then I check. Can I cancel anything out? Unfortunately, not yet, but this 3 is very suspicious. So I'm going to take it out. So if I take out a 3... I would be left with x minus 2, which matches that other one, x plus 3. And then you should be happy because something's going to cancel out, indicating that you have a whole. Okay, x minus 4, x minus 2. Here we go. So x minus 2 cancels out, which indicates that's the whole. x equals 2. That's where the whole was. Now the guy that didn't cancel out, this one, is your vertical asymptote, and you have to set that equal to zero, so that's when x is negative three. So where's that um, vertical asymptote? x equals negative three. Okay, good. Now, when we are looking for the horizontal asymptote, this one's interesting. So notice how the polynomial started with an order or a maximum power of 2 divided by a maximum power of 2. When we have those cases when it's equal, we have to look and divide the coefficients. In this case, the coefficients are 1 over 3, so my horizontal asymptote is 1 third. So for example, if you had like, you know, 3x squared divided by like 7x squared, the horizontal asymptote would be 3 sevenths and so forth. Now that only works when these are the same. If it's bottom heavy, it goes to zero. So like if this was x cubed down here, it'd be zero. And if it was top heavy, you'd have to do synthetic division and find a slant asymptote, which is beyond this question. So back on track. Okay, so for the x-intercepts, <clears throat> we have to set y equal to zero, which is technically over here. Let's just technically y. So and if, if it's a ratio, you can cross multiply, that means the bottom would go away, and you're really just looking at the top and setting that equal to zero. And it kind of jumps out at you. Okay, the x-intercept um, is four. Okay, so now we're ready to do the graph and then we'll talk about the domain. So let's plot everything we have. I had a hole at two. So like one, two, there was a hole somewhere. Um, I know my, my x-intercept was four. That's important. Three, four, so I know it's gonna go through four. My vertical asymptote was at negative three. One, two, three, so that. Good. My horizontal asymptote was <clears throat> at one third. So let's do that. If this is one, one third is going to be roughly here. Perfect. Okay, good. And what else do I have? Uh, I am missing somebody. I'm missing my. No, it's all good. All right, good. Aha, so if it goes through this white point, my x-intercept, let's do our line in green. If I know it's going through this point, it's got to be hugging this asymptote eventually, which means 
it's coming and hugging this asymptote from here. Okay. Now I didn't talk about my hole yet. My hole is at x equals two. Boom. There's my open hole. Okay. Hole. And if that happens here, you must abide by the other asymptotes. And I'm guessing the graph is here. Pretty certain. Uh, you can do test points and now we can actually answer our domain stuff so the domain is going to be all real numbers except vertical asymptote so x cannot equal 3 or x cannot equal 2 for the whole and that would be your restrictions on domain some teachers like uh, interval notation that would be negative infinity comma negative 3 excuse me comma union uh, negative 3 comma 2 comma union uh, da, 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 2 comma infinity nice okay I hope you enjoyed number one let's move on to number two all right my algebra wizards I hope you enjoyed number one let's move on to number two okay so we have this rational expression because it's a fraction uh, n squared plus 7n. Yes, we can factor that, but don't rush. You know, think wisely here. Over 1. So you're going to have to fix this common denominator issue by multiplying this one by this polynomial. And if you do that on top, yes, you're going to have to factor. I mean, not factor, distribute. Good. So, and then keep in mind that this is a going to be a negative 3 that we're going to distribute into each of these terms. That way it'll line up nicely with this 4. So if I do that properly, I'll get 4 minus 3n squared minus 3 times 7, negative 21, n. And then 3 times 6, minus 18, minus 18 all over and if you really wanted to you can go ahead and factor this guy down now now let's factor this um, n plus six and n plus one and we only have one more step to do is combine like terms and we're pretty much at the answer okay so <clears throat> the three n squared stays minus 21 n stays negative 18 plus four will be negative 14. Yes, you can take out the negative and uh, simplify it that way, but I actually think this is as simple as it gets, uh, and I don't think a teacher would be too nitpicky about the negative coming out. But if you wanted to, it would be negative, and everything on top would be positive, and the same thing. All right, rock stars, I hope you enjoyed number two as much as I did. Let's move on. All right, congratulations, ladies and gentlemen. If you got this far, you're probably going to do well on the exam. Here we go. Let's do our trig functions. Okay, so I know I'm dealing with a cosine cup, and just as a review, it still helps my brain. I know it's going to do kind of this thing by a 2 pi. Okay, so the way that your teacher wants you to tackle this is using like this table, and then manipulating the table, and then we're also going to label everything that happens and then regraph it. So, first, this equation, I need to just kind of rewrite it in a format that is more uh, suitable for me. 4 cosine theta plus 1. So all I did is just move the plus 1, which is going to be your midline, or it's going to manipulate or change your y's, essentially. So first, let's get our original points in, right? And we'll talk about everything. So cosine cup at 0, it is by 1. By the time it, it hits pi halves, the first tick, as I like to say, it's zero. And then at pi, it's at negative one, it's lower amplitude. And then by um, three pi halves, we come back through zero. And by two pi, we complete a period and get back to z one. Thank you. Get back to one. All right. So. Now let's answer our questions. So I always check the period first because it's the most complicated one. And to check the period, we look for our number or a multiplier in, the, in front of theta, which we don't have. So our period stays the same. So no period change. Our period is still 2 pi. Now amplitude is pretty easy. Think of it like a guitar string. 
So this number four is like multiplying the guitar string. So it's got to like hit four when you like strum it, if you will. So the amplitude is four. Uh, midline is now going to be one. Uh, that's all we need, right? Okay, so let's start graphing. Oh, oh, let's do the table first and then graph. Okay, good. So now that we talked about stuff, so there is no horizontal shift, otherwise it'd be here in the parentheses next to theta. So our x's stay the same. Our period didn't change, so our x's stay the same. But our amplitude is gonna change, okay? So our amplitude, we have to multiply our y's by four. Okay, and that's gonna be like four, zero, negative four, zero, and four. And for our midline, we go up one. Good, and the midline acts as a vertical shift up one. Okay, so then we have to do what we just did, but we have to add one to the y's. So let's add one to that. I think that gives us to five, one, negative three, one, and five. Okay, now I'm ready to graph. So our period's still gonna be the same. So by two pi, we have to finish. Uh, pi is in the middle, pi halves, and three pi halves. <clears throat> All right, so uh, now zero has to map to five. One, two, three, four, and five. So we start here. Uh, by pi halves, you're gonna hit one. By pi, you have to hit negative three. By three pi halves, you have to hit one again. And by two pi, you're gonna finish the cycle and go up to five. And that's the graph. And then if we were to list our domain and range, domain, is all real numbers. And then our range uh, is going to be negative 3 to 5. And we're going to get a bracket on this because it actually goes through. All right, let's get number 3 going. First order of business, I want to rewrite this trig function into like its standard form, and then I can identify the period, amplitude, and all the displacement stuff. So y equals four, that's the amplitude, cosine, now we have to play with this number three, that's going to affect our period, uh, plus one, that's our vertical displacement. Okay, good, so now uh, the period, that's the first thing that we have to mess with. If you have a number in front of theta, you're going to have to divide that number uh, on the bottom of 2 pi to get the new period. So you take the original period, which is 2 pi, and you're going to divide it by the number you see, 3. Okay. And then if you think about it, I carefully crafted, or you can kind of divide it out and then simplify for your table. So x and y. So our original x values used to be uh, 0 pi halves pi, 3 pi halves, and 2 pi. And with the period shift, the your new ending is going to be 2 pi thirds. And then if you like multiply this by half or divide it by 2 to get to here, that's what I did first, that was 2 pi sixth. So 2 pi sixth, uh, and then you have 2 pi twelfths, and then right in between, and then uh, 0 is still 0, and then in between these you have, if you think about it, this is 4 pi sixth, so this would be like 5 pi six. no, 3 pi six. my bad, uh, 3 pi six. Perfect. 
And let's just scooch these values in so they're not floating. This is zero. Uh, this was two pi twelfths. <clears throat> now these do simplify. And uh, if you want, we can just take care. We'll do that on the graph. Um, good. Now, amplitude, four. Mention that. And our original values used to be 1, 0, negative 1, uh, 0, and 1. And we have a vertical displacement or a vertical shift of a plus 1. Okay? So we have to uh, multiply our y and then add 1 to it. Okay? So 4y. It's going to be like 4, 0, negative 4, 0, and 4. And then when I add one more to that, I'll get 5, 1, negative 3, 1, and 5. Excellent. And now we're ready to graph. <clears throat> so let's talk, we can simplify these as we plot. Well, 0 is still going to be 0, and now 0 maps to, maps to 5. So one, two, three, four, and five. Okay. Now two pi twelfths is the same as pi six. Boom, pi six. And we're directed pi six is going to hit one. There's one. By our next tick, which is two pi six or pi thirds. We have to go to negative three. One, two, three. That's right somewhere on my top of my three. I'll make it big. Okay, good. Our next tick, three pi six or pi halves. Uh, that receives probably the mirror of one. Yes, it does. Our last tick, two pi thirds. There's your period. Goes up to five. Yes, it does. So let's add a little color to this. And there is your cosine cup. Boom. Now let's talk about our domain and range. Uh, the domain is still going to be all real numbers. So you would have negative infinity to infinity. And the range of the function <clears throat> uh, it oscillates from negative 3. That's going to get a bracket though. Up to 5 with a bracket. Good, I hope you enjoyed three. Let's move on to four. All right, let's move on to number four. Now, good news, when we're dealing with tangent, we don't have to, we don't have to deal with an amplitude, so our amplitude's none. But I see this half in front of my theta, and I don't like it. I need to distribute it inside. So let's do that. So y will equal three tangent, and if I distribute that in, that'll be like um, one half theta plus one-half pi. Okay, good. Now, this one-half number, we're going to use that to figure out our new period. Now, remember, um, tangent has likes to tango. It's in a rush, so its original period is by pi. So to find the new period, we take pi, and we're going to divide it by the number in front of theta, which is a half. Now, pi divided by half is the same thing as pi times 2, which is... 2 pi. Great. So after we get the period, we should look at our um, horizontal displacement, which is going to happen here. And remember, horizontal shift and displacements are usually our opposite direction always. So our, uh, our horizontal displacement, we're going to go left, uh, negative half pi. Okay, so now I'm ready to, to attack my table, x and y. <clears throat> now remember, original tangent, he likes to tango at the asymptote, and then he comes back to zero, and that happens by pi. So let's map that. That was zero, zero. That was pi halves to undefined. And then we have pi coming back to zero. Okay, so now let's deal with our period. 
So if the period is 2 pi, halfway there would be pi, and 0 is still 0. Now we have to deal with our horizontal shift, and we have to subtract every, uh, half pi. So this would be minus pi over 2. Uh, pi minus a half pi is a pi minus half pi is a half pi, so pi over 2. And pi, ha oh, pi 2, 2 pi, minus a half would be 1 and a half pi's, or 3 pi 2. 3 pi over 2. Nice. Now we're ready to graph. Our asymptotes don't change, so that's nice. So our ticks, we decided, were negative pi over 2. Pi over 2 is going to be our asymptote. And our last tick is going to be 3 pi over 2. Okay, so we start at 0, and we tango to the asymptote, and then we're going to come right back. Okay, I hope you enjoyed 4. All right, for number 5, when it says find the exact value of a trigonometric function like this, <clears throat> Most likely, you're going to be dealing with a unit circle. Now, if you're savvy with the unit circle, you might recall um, that pi thirds is this, this stick, or 60 degrees. Now, if you don't recall, you would just take uh, pi thirds. Excuse me, this should be saying pi in the problem. You would take pi thirds, and you would multiply it by... Um, the reciprocal of 2 pi, or like I, I like to use pi of over 180. Kind of makes my numbers easier. Okay, 180 divided by 3 is 60 degrees, and you can kind of figure out where you are on that triangle. Okay, 60 degrees. Then we know this is 1 half comma rad 3 over 2. And that would be its cosine sine functions, and then I would find that bubble on my, on my chart. And I would answer this is one half. All right, for number six, I'm going to try to keep up my um, same unit circle and, and show you how it's useful kind of everywhere. Or all, you can kind of build it as you go on the test. You don't need to necessarily map all of it. You can just start with the first quadrant and kind of get the rest as you need it. First observation for tangent, I see a circle 360 inside here. It's got to get out. So we're back on 60. Right. Oh, nope, excuse me. We're, we're 30. Okay. So now I'm looking for a tangent of 30 degrees. Now, 30 degrees is going to produce rad 3 for the cosine over 2, comma, 1 half. Okay. So, and then you would have to recall tangent equals uh, sine over cosine. And then go to your unit circle you would see that um, at 30 degrees, sine is a half. And at 30 degrees, cosine is rad 3 over 2. Now remember, we don't divide fractions. We multiply reciprocals. <clears throat> and the 2s do cancel out, but we have this thing called a um, radical downstairs that must be rationalized. So we mu multiply rad 3, rad 3, and our, get our final answer. Rad 3 over 3 is the exact value for this trigonometric function. All right, to find the exact value for number 7, for a cosecant equation, we're going to follow the same rules, and we're going to recall that cosecant is the same thing as 1 over sine, and we'll find that on our unit circle. But I suspect there's at least one, if not two, circles I can subtract out of this quantity to get back on the unit circle. So let's do that. So if I subtract out a 2 pi, that's 4. That's 8. Uh, 21 minus 8, 13. I can subtract another one, minus 8 pi. Fourths minus 8. So it'll get me to 5. 5 pi over 4. Okay, now our challenge is going to be to find that on the unit circle. <clears throat> you can multiply this by 180 over pi, 
and then you'll find it's 225 degrees and you can kind of subtract the 180 bar from it and you'll land at like 45 degrees southeast what do I mean by that on your unit circle that was the 180 line here's pi or 180 we're gonna go 45 degrees southwest excuse me which means uh, if it's any at, at a 45 stick it's one of these which I really like you just have to figure out that cosine is negative and so is sine okay now we can go and uh, um, figure out our 1 over sine thing so we are asked, just basically looking at cosecant which is the, the sine function over here uh, cosecant of what did I say? Oh yeah, this. What am I that? Cosecant of our pi thing, five pi over four. That's the stick we're on. And I'm gonna say it's gonna be the same thing as one over sine of five pi fourths. Okay. So what is the inverse of five pi? Um, first five pi fourths is there. Inverse means flip it. So that equals 2 over radical 2. And remember they're both negative and this creates a rationalization problem. And our final answer, negative 2 rad 2 over 2 or negative radical 2. All right, number 8. Same thing um, or same strategy. I says, but it's rotating backwards. So our unit circle usually goes this way, and then we're gonna find out what it does, and then a negative rotation, if you will. So like, let's say I did, uh, like the last problem, 225 was here, like a negative 225 rotation would like land me here, right? At the 45 degree angle stick in this quadrant. All right, let me show you what I mean. <clears throat> I have negative 13 pi over 4 and I know that there's a, a circle in there but here I have to add 2 pi why because it's the opposite direction right <clears throat> boom and we get our number again 5 pi fourths which is great so kinda what I was talking about earlier right if 5 pi fourths was here negative 5 pi fourths is there on the unit circle and that means you have negative radical 2 over 2 for cosine and radical 2 over 2 for sine. Uh, cosine, uh, there it is. It's just screaming at me. Our answer is negative rad 2 over 2. <coughs> All right, for this one, we're still in the world of finding the exact value. So first, we really want to isolate the trigonometric statement, and then we can play with it. So I'm going to add this 2 to the other side. So I'll have 2 sine squared of theta will now equal positive 2. Then I want to divide by 2. <clears throat> then I would be left with sine squared theta is going to be equal to 1. So then I want to just take the square root of this to get rid of that squareness and I'll have sine theta would equal just 1. And then go on your unit circle you would realize um, 0, 1. Sine theta happens at 90 degrees for uh, sine theta equals 1 happens at 90 degrees or pi halves. All right, number 10. I thought it was fascinatingly simple in its complexity, but it was also scary in its simplicity. So first order of business, just like last time, let's isolate this thing and subtract the 2. So we have secant of x is going to equal negative 2. Now recall that secant technically is the same thing, right, as um, 1 over cosine 1 over cosine x 
And wh where, so where is 1 over cosine? Oh, and then if we flip this, flip that. Boom. Where is uh, 1 over cosine negative a half? That's the question. So then back to the unit circle. Um, boom. I have negative a half is here. No. Negative a half is here. And here. And if you look on your unit circle, it's going to be theta has to equal uh, 2 pi thirds. Or 4 pi thirds. And then some teachers want you to write this like plus 2 pi k for like the number of circles you do. Because technically every time you add a circle to it, to like 4 pi thirds, you'll get another set of solutions. Cool. Let's move on to the proofs. All right. For verifying identities, I like to think strategically like yes I can probably distribute this in and maybe create a little bit of work but because I see like tangent over there and I see like secant I'm thinking like maybe what happens if I just divide everything by cosine you know and what I want to say is there's no wrong way as long as you're an algebra stud or an algebra wizard um, eventually you'll get there but if you make one algebra mistake I would say abandon start over and you might fix it with a different approach. All right, so once cosine is gone, <clears throat> I'll get 1 plus tangent squared of theta will equal secant. Okay, well, secant theta. Now, instead of dividing it by cosine, you know, I'm thinking, like, why don't I just multiply by the inverse cousin by secant? Because isn't cosine the same thing as, as 1 over secant? It is, because if you flip it, right? Okay, good. Now you're starting to get excited because you see secant times secant is secant squared. And this is starting to look mysteriously like one of your trig identities. And if you look this up, that is secant squared. And that's how we verify this identity. All right, last one, number 10. Okay, so I'm just going to re rewrite this as I talk about our strategies. As you always want to think, what is the smartest, like one move or like domino effect, like solving a Rubik's Cube, right? Mm -hmm. Everything we do, every, every action has a reaction, right? Okay, plus secant theta. Okay, excellent. So last time, you know, like I got rid of, like, I just don't like the sign here. Like, right away, my intuition is just saying, let's just get rid of fractions. Okay, I'm just going to multiply this by sine theta. And then we have to bracket this. And then this becomes sine theta. Okay. So the sine theta cancels out. You're left with 1 plus tangent of theta equals. Okay, now sine theta times cosecant. Remember, cosecant is 1 over sine. So if I'm multiplying that, I'll get technically like sine theta, which is the original yellow one, over, instead of cosecant, it's going to be over sine theta, which is cool. And um, sine times secant, i got to figure that out. So secant is going to be the same thing as 1 over cosine. And then you would realize that's kind of cool too, because you have sine theta, which is now going to line up over cosine theta. And that is tangent, okay? And that's 1, okay? So this is 1 plus tangent theta, and it's solved or verified. Congratulations. I wish you the best of luck. You know exactly how to find me if you need me.